Hey you guys, how are you? Uh, hello and welcome. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. Beautiful spring day here, middle of March. Not sure when I'm gonna post this. I don't know if you guys can see my primulas back there are just doing really well. Got all my spring bulbs back there. I'm gonna have to make a video on those. They're, they're gonna be beautiful this year. Uh, this is my second time filming this video because the first one was a little too long and I want to make these a little bit more concise. Uh, give you guys some key takeaways right off the bat. So this over here is the Denver's uh, Denver's Dream Gold and Copper and Gold. It's a variety of miniature rose. So this here is Rosa Chinensis variety minima. There's other rose varieties that are also um, uh, miniature, like the Rosa uh, Diversifolia and the Rosa Namula. But I'm gonna make this video general, just about all miniature roses, just because a lot of their care is quite the same. So this here is native to Sichuan, China initially, but it's been cross-hybridized all around the world and it's become quite a popular uh, gift, especially around Mother's Day. Around Easter you'll see a lot of these, especially in the more pastel uh, color scheme where like pinks and rosy colors. They come in single blooms, they come in double blooms, and these are just the new bloom stalks. They're quite profuse. Um, right off the bat, I'm going to give this pl a plant difficulty of about 2 out of 10 when you bring it back from the store. Uh, just because they're so heavily fertilized, you don't even really have to do anything to them for the first couple weeks. They just kind of grow. Uh, some things some people have some problems with in the first few weeks of bringing them home is they'll get a little bit of yellow leaves on the very bottom, and usually that's just because of underwatering, because these plants are usually sold in very well-draining pots. Uh, this plant does love low-draining, or sorry, quick-draining water pots, um, so it likes good drainage. Uh, a lot of people will find also, I have a little bit here, that they'll get a little bit of crisp on their bottom leaves. That's usually also because of underwatering, but it's also because of a lack of light exposure sometimes. These plants like very, very bright, I would almost go as far as to say direct light in the mornings, and then they like it to taper off to a little bit of damper, dampered shade uh, in the afternoons. You'll get the most blooms, most colorful, prolific blooms on these guys uh, if you keep them in full sun. So this is a long-lived plant. It generally blooms in mid to late spring, sometimes a little bit earlier if you're lucky, so usually March, April, May, June. Uh, and then they bloom again in the fall, usually around October into November into the uh, winter season here in the Northern Hemisphere. So that'll be completely opposite for you guys in the Southern Hemisphere. Has a mature, uh, it has a very sort of robust, thick growth habit. They're, they're quite mounding, they produce these uh, very round shrubs uh, that are usually about two feet tall, usually about two feet wide, not a lot bigger than that, generally speaking. They're usually sold in groups of about four to six. I recommend dividing these and putting them each in their own pot. Uh, that way they can really stretch and elongate and grow. Uh, plant difficulty will definitely go up for you guys uh, if you keep these alive past the summer into their perennial growth habit. Uh, I would say up into even five or six or even seven out of 10 difficulty as the years progress. Uh, this is cold hardy to about negative 12 degrees Celsius. There's a big truck going by just Okay, sorry about that. Uh, negative 12 degrees Celsius, I think, is a general cold point. They don't like very hot weather. I think 30 degrees Celsius is a little warm for them. They tend to deteriorate a little bit. Um, yeah. So some common problems include Botrytis cinerea, so gray and white mold. Um, yeah, you want to avoid that by just avoid top watering if you're growing these in containers. If you're going to grow these here uh, directly in the garden, I recommend growing them a little bit deeper, and then you can get adventitious roots on the side lateral branches, and then you can just create a fuller, more bushy um, uh, structure. So these are edible. A lot of the newer varieties are quite bitter. I don't recommend eating them, though, simply because there's not a lot of roughage on there. If you're going to put these guys in salads, um, there's just not a lot of bloom material. I recommend going with a bigger rose. If you're going to grow this culinarily, it's not going to give you a whole lot. But needless to say, they are edible. They do have some little quills and um, thorns. I don't know if you can see that very well. They're not very sharp, but just be mindful of that when you're pruning. Uh, this isn't toxic to pets, to my knowledge, um, but who wants for their pet to eat their beautiful rose, right? So they're double and single blooms. This here is the double one. Uh, I don't know if I said, but they're native to Sichuan, China. And I just wanted to show you guys the exact same variety here, only this one's a few years older, just to show you the contrast in between the um, leaf color when it first emerges. 
So I don't know if you guys can see here, they start off a little bit more red, a little bit more of a tinge of almost like rosy sort of maroon on the sides. And then they have these really interesting sheaths. Uh, trademark Rosaceae family compound leaf, usually in lobes of, a, lobes of about five. Um, they like to be kept a little bit wetter in the summer, I've noticed, but if you keep them too wet in the winter months, they tend to deteriorate and get a little bit of soft rot, so you just want to be careful and make sure you have good drainage. And yeah, so that's just my introduction to the miniature rose, um, Rosa sinensis var miniata. Beautiful plant, uh, somewhat glossy actually, really nice structure to it. And I just wanted to finish this by just panning through this. Isn't this beautiful? All of my... Um, plants are coming by, I have a really nice Asiatic lily there. I wish I could just like bottle up this smell for you guys, it smells so good in this part of the garden. Yeah, anyways, thank you for your support, have a wonderful day you guys, stay blessed, and be healthy.